Well, I think it's about time for another how to get into video. I really enjoy making these videos, but you know, it takes a little bit of extra work because I dive deep into an artist or a band's musical discography and kind of discuss like what makes them great, what it is that I love about them, and uh, spending some time with individual albums uh, as it relates to the overall discography. This gives you a very good roadmap for how to get into an artist or a group. Uh, so this one's gonna be a little bit different just because of the vastness and the plethora of albums as well as musical expressions that come with this particular artist. And that artist is Heavy Devi, Devin Townsend himself. Uh, Devin Townsend has proven himself to be one of the most unique musicians working today. He uh, doesn't really care too, too much about the musical expression that he wants to take. Uh, he just wants to make sure that, you know, he's making very unique, interesting, and always engaging music. So the way that I've kind of structured this one is a little bit different from the other ones. I've got actually a number of different categories that I'm going to be talking about, starting with where to start. These are the albums that if you had heard nothing about Devin Townsend before, this gives you the best idea of his overall discography. Then I've got albums that you really can't go wrong with. Uh, maybe not necessarily the best place to start, but definitely albums that anybody can pick up and really enjoy. Then I've got Next Steps, I've got Best Bets, I've got Now That You're Initiated and You Kind of Understand What's Going On, here are some albums to keep, kind of go even deeper into. Then I've got maybe Proceed With Caution, these are ones that, you know, only diehard fans really listen to, uh, and even then it's kind of questionable. Uh, and then finally I've got a little bit of an extra credit, which I'm going to be talking about at the end of this video. So that's kind of how I'm going to be structuring this one. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be talking about the Steve Vai album of Sex and Religion, which was the first album that he was featured on. Uh, and I'm not going to be talking about Strapping Young Lad, only because I feel, even though this was the first project that he did after Steve Vai, I do feel as though Strapping Young Lad is a band um to itself rather than a Devin Townsend led project. Even though Strapping Young Lad is kind of a Devin Townsend led project, I feel like it has such a unique identity in and of itself. It kind of has its own classification. I will still talk about it at the end of this video, but just not going to go too, too deep into it. So that's enough of me hammering on. Oh, I guess I should do a little bit of a... Um, kind of a caveat. Um, this is just my own personal opinion. Uh, you know, I am a huge, huge Devin Townsend fan. I think I've seen him like four or five times live. I've listened obviously to all of his albums numerous times. Uh, but you know, in terms of an authoritative source on this, eh, <laughs> this is just my own personal opinion. I'm just having fun with it. This would be kind of my own robot that I would give to somebody. I'm not saying that this is the definitive one. This is just the one that I would give. And I think that's pretty much about it. Yeah, let's dive into it. I'm gonna move over to the side so I can showcase the album that I'll be talking about right beside me over here. Where to start? Okay, so these albums are albums that give you a best idea of the Devin Townsend, the Heavy Devi discography. Basically, these are the absolute masterpieces, in my opinion, um, as well as these are the ones that, um, if you have no concept of a Devin Townsend project, this gives you the perfect idea of it. So let's talk about the three. Let's talk about Ocean Machine. Let's talk about Ziltoid the Omniscient. Let's talk about Ghost. So first up, Ocean Machine. This was his first album not related to Steve Vai uh, or um, Strapping Young Lad. This was his first kind of solo album. He hit the ground running with this one. This one gives a really good idea of the overall music that Devin is able to capture. It's heavy, it's dark, it's, you know, it's got the balls to the wall insanity while also blending this beautiful wall of noise that's found within it. I mean, the last three tracks of Funeral, Bastard, and Death of Music is just beyond words how beautiful these are. Uh, each one really does something very unique and very special, uh, especially with the Death of Music taking so long to really build itself up. And it was really contextualizing what heavy metal could do in a progressive rock 
expression. You know, this guy was released back in 1997, I believe it was, and not a whole lot of artists were willing to experiment to this extent, and I feel like Devin did a brilliant and beautiful job while doing so. This album gives you a really good idea of what to expect with Devin Townsend's work. You know, if you don't connect with anything on this album, we might have a little bit of a problem moving forward, um, but it's still, like, I think a solid standard for Devin's music. Moving from there, we go to his other masterpiece of Ziltoy the Omniscient, released back in, what was it, 2007? So almost like a decade into the future, we have a narrative concept album of a puppet alien that comes down to Earth, asks for the greatest cup of coffee, gets disappointed, chooses to destroy the Earth, and the Earth like banding together to try to move them away. Uh, it has come out that this is a massive metaphor for Devin's creative processes, you know, his struggles between his creative endeavors and what he wants to do with what sounds good and what can be earth from that and this like push and pull from all the different areas. But this has some of his heaviest music, you know, he's definitely drawing inspiration from his strapping young lad with uh, ZTO, By Your Command, uh, Ziltoid Attack, and Solar Winds. And like the first like 10 minutes of this album are just jaw dropping brilliant metal. It's hard, it's fast paced, it's heavy hitting. It has so much of those like really grimy aspects. And we're not even talking about the ninth, uh, seventh track of uh, Planet Smasher, which I friggin' love, just with how heavy and hard hitting it is. But honestly, it's those last three tracks, Color Your Worlds, The Greys, and uh, Tall Latte, that really package this thing all together. You know, Color Your World is such a brilliant, brilliant closing track in uh, essentially bringing everything into a fold. And I'm really loving that whole aspect of all this um again it's relentless it's balls to the wall insane and then by the time we get into the grays with that final play out it's so brilliant and beautiful it's haunting it's hypnotic it's everything that i'm really hoping for from a Devin townsend project and then the tall latte is just hilarious you know and that's a perfect really a perfect representation for Devin's music where it's all these really weird things, but at the end of the day, it's also just balls to the wall insane. <laughs> so yeah, Ziltoid the Omniscient is the perfect metal album from his collection. If uh, Ocean Machine was a perfect representation of his music as a whole, this is kind of looking at the one facet of his metal, you know, what made Heavy Devi Heavy Devi in that sense. And then let's go uh, full 180 degrees uh, into the other direction with Ghost. Uh, Ghost was the final album in his four album Devin Townsend project uh, that was uh, it was just supposed to be these four right start with Kai go to Addicted uh, and then Deconstruction and Ghost were literally released on the same day and these two albums could not be any different. Ghost is Devin's somber quiet mellow very abstract atmospheric almost ethereal type of music you know it's really just Devin uh, Katrina and um, Kate Apple on the woodwinds uh, that bring everything together. Uh, it's a musical journey in the best possible way. Um, and he's done these types of albums quite a bit. And I feel like this is the best realized version of those albums. I really do feel as though he he got his perfect point across with this one. There's a lot of ebbs and flows. There's a lot of peaks and valleys. Every time there's a very pleasant valley where you're really enjoying the space, he begins a climb up to a peak that crescendos into a very beautiful blossom of music. We have such beautiful tracks like Feather and Ghost, as well as Dark Matters and Textra, uh, Texa, Texada. I think it is. Uh, these three tracks, three or four tracks, uh, really do paint a perfect picture for this more ethereal, very, um, you know, up in the clouds, very mellow. Like, I put this on when I need a chill out. Uh, it's the perfect album to fall asleep to, and it's just a really a, a beautiful 
beautiful expression from someone that is such a master of just balls to the wall insanity. I know a lot of people aren't a big, big fan of this expression of his music, but honestly, this is one of my favorite expressions of his music. And I really think Ghost is the best place to start. So if you haven't already listened to Ghost, please, I urge you to go and check it out because it really is a fantastic, haunting musical experience. So those are the three albums that I would start off when introducing Devin Townsend to somebody. Now I'm going to go into albums that you honestly can't go wrong with. These are albums that are pretty much perfect in their own right. So if these first three albums that I talked about, you know, Ocean Machine, Ziltoid, and Ghost, if they didn't quite click, maybe give these guys a try. The three that I'm going to be talking about, Teria, Deconstruction, and Transcendence. The first one I want to talk about is Teria. I feel like after his first three or four albums on his own, really playing around with music, seeing what worked, seeing what didn't, I really feel as though this one was the kind of the culmination of all that experimentation. He saw what worked and then he dove deep into this. And really this is seen with the uh, third, fourth, and fifth tracks listening back to back to back. First two all tracks, Olives and Mountain, are great. I think they're brilliant at setting up. You know, Olives are just a what's going on kind of a track. And Mountain is this massive, larger than life sound of or wall of sound track. Then we come into the third track of Earth Day, which is a perfect example of Devin Townsend's mindset. We go into probably one of my absolute favorite tracks from Devin with Deep Peace. And we end off this one, two, three punch with uh, Canada. Uh, these three tracks, Earth Day, Deep Peace, and Canada, are about maybe almost 20 minutes worth of perfect music, uh, especially with Deep Peace. Deep Peace, the midsection of Deep Peace, is one that I will literally just jump to right from the starting gate and just close my eyes and let the music wash over. It is an absolute masterpiece of music. Um, and I, I think this is a type of music that almost anybody can listen to and uh, at least agree that yes what we're listening to is good capital g music if you were to listen to any singular track off of any devon townsend album deep peace would be the one to go to the only thing about teria that i'm not a big fan of is the last handful of tracks uh the fluke nobody's here tiny tears uh stagnant and uh the bonus track of humble they're fine. I just feel like the massive punch of the beginning por portion of this album definitely overshadows the second uh, second half of this album. Much like Ocean Machine, this gives you a perfect example, flavor, and taste of what Devin Townsend can offer. You know, it's got the heavy hitting moments. It's got those really mellow and atmospheric moments. It's a blending of the two. You know, if you took Ziltoid and you took Ghost, you smashed them together, you get Terria. After Terria, let's go to the other half of the one-two punch from Ghost, uh, Deconstruction. Probably his heaviest album. Uh, to date. I can't think of any other album that went so heavy, so metal as a whole, like from start to finish. You know, there are definitely tracks before and after that are heavier, but as an absolute whole from start to finish, I don't think anything is as heavy as Deconstruction. And it's for that reason that I friggin' love it. You know, there are so many brilliant, brilliant tracks on here. The latter half of this album just shines so bright, starting with The Mighty Masturbator, the 17 minute epic that it is. You know, there's almost like this clubhouse dance sequence, like an EDM drop that goes on that's just, ridiculous it balls to the wall insane but i think the title track of uh this album deconstruction there's that moment near the end that really the heavens open up and the angels come down it's so big it's so grand it's so vast you know it's one of those things where you're at the top of the hill you're at the top of the mountain and you're just looking over the vastness of the landscape that has come before and after. Deconstruction, much like Ghost, is a perfect album. Uh, and finally, the last one I want to talk about is his final album in the Devin Townsend project of Transcendence. Not necessarily my favorite of his, uh, but I do feel as though this is the best expression that he started with Epic Cloud, which I'll be talking about in a bit. Three albums that came with Epic Cloud, Z2, and Transcendence. I feel like Transcendence is the final punctuation mark, the realization of what he was trying to occur. It blends that big, loud, large sound and a little bit more of an accessible metal approach. It does kind of dip its toe into a lot more of that 
kind of accessible metal. Um, you, you could probably listen to a lot of the tracks off of this album and feel like it could be played on a radio, which... Honestly, for most of these albums, you couldn't say in the least for those. And even with all this, it still has a number of uh, tracks that I just really do love. Uh, the one that I really love is uh, Failure and Stormbringer. Uh, Storm Bending, I always say Stormbringer. And these are the two very accessible kind of an album. So if you're not into the big metal scene and you don't like the very ethereal up in the clouds, no perch kind of things, then I would start here as well. Like for a lot of my friends and family that don't really care for a lot of experimental type of music, this is their favorite work from Devin Townsend. The only thing about this album that I'm not, I'm wondered about is the structure because the big track of Higher, the big almost 10 minute track is right in the center of the album. So by the time I get to Higher, I'm not all that excited about all the albums that came after that. Although trans, uh, trans, Transdermal Celebration is a very good closing track off of this, and it's still one that I come back to. I don't come back to it as often as a lot of his other stuff, but, you know, in terms of those three albums of the Epic Cloud sound, this is the one that I come back to the most. So, if you're into this, I got some good news moving forward. Okay, so let's go into the next steps. These are some albums that pretty much anyone would like and enjoy, um, but I think once you kind of get the context of what Devin is putting down with a lot of his albums, you're going to get more out of these albums than you would have if you went in blind. And these three albums are Synchestria, Addicted, and the aforementioned Epic Cloud. So first off, let's talk about Synchestria. Uh, Synchestria is a really interesting album, and it's very similar to Teria in that it's a little bit of a mixed grab bag, but it has pretty much from a start to finish pretty solid runtime, even though some tracks are better than others, you know? The one thing that I love specifically about this album is the Van Polka and Vampyra. Yeah, these two tracks are some of my favorite Devin Townsend uh, expressions. It's very, very accessible, but it's also very quirky and quintessential Devin Townsend. And it does have a number of like standout tracks outside of just Van Polka and Vampyra. Uh, Gaia and Pixelate are two very experimental tracks that I friggin' love. Uh, I really enjoy the, I always call it like a running style from Triumph, the third track. Um, and a simple lullaby is just ridiculous. I do feel as though it's a little bit on the long side, edging just over an hour. Uh, they probably could have scaled back by about 20 minutes and still had a really outstanding album. Uh, but this one is just fantastic. Um, and it gives you a really good idea of more of what Devin has to offer. Now, if we're talking about a very um, unifying album, uh, we come into Addicted. Uh, part of his Devin Townsend 4 album suite. Uh, Addicted is a very heavy, but I feel more raw, a little bit more stripped back in terms of like the big wall of sound that he's known for with just all these different soundscapes coming in onto the mix and onto the fold. This one's a lot more scaled back and it features a lot of Anna, uh, Annika von Gershenberg, uh, who does a lot of the vocals on here and her vocals are always, always just mwah, brilliant and beautiful. I love the big tracks of Bend It Like Bender, Super Crush, uh, e Ah is probably the big, big track from this album that everybody loves. Uh, but I also love the kind of recontextualize of Hyperdrive from the Ziltoid the Omniscient. Uh, it's a little bit more stripped back. It's not quite as blow down the doors intense. Um, and yeah, I think this is a really interesting time. Um, and if you're, again, if you're looking for this more raw, stripped back, but very energetic then you're going to love this aspect of the band. And the final one that I want to talk about, which is almost like it's the same kind of expression, but in a full other recontextualizing, is Epic Cloud. Uh, Epic Cloud is that same kind of shorter tracks, punchier music, um, but big, big, big sound. Uh, we're looking at very big wall of noise aspects on here. Uh, it is huge in terms of that scale. Uh, and this also has a lot of his more popular tracks as well. I think this was one of the first albums that really kind of broke Devin Townsend into the public eye rather than just those who are, I don't know, on the outskirts or something. Uh, but this is where we get tracks like True North, Lucky Animals, uh, and the big one of Kingdom, 
Like Kingdom is one that everybody loves. Uh, but I also love some of the smaller tracks like Race and Hold On. Uh, these are a little bit more uh, personal as well. Uh, but yeah, just this huge, huge wall of sound noise. This would almost be a perfect introduction for anybody that is looking for a Devin. I feel like so much better music has been written because a lot of these tracks are very, very small and very punchy in terms of runtime, but huge in terms of scale. So that's kind of where I'm at for Epic Cloud. It's not my favorite, but it does hold some of his most popular tracks because if anybody knows any uh, track from Devin, it's most likely going to be Kingdom. Okay, so now we're getting into some of his more for the initiated. But even still, I want to talk about what I call the best bets. These are like the hidden gems that hold something, some of his best work in terms of like individual songs. But it might be a challenge for those who haven't really heard anything from Devin Townsend just without any uh, initiation. And we've got the three albums of Kai, Casualties of Cool, and Empath. So I want to talk about Kai. Because Kai is one of my absolute favorite albums, bar none. And it was the first of the whole Devin Townsend projects. The one thing that I love is almost how, like, it feels like home it is. Like, it's really strange to try to put it into that context. Um, but it, it does have that balls to the wall insanity of the beginning, the very mellow, smaller, very intimate tracks from the middle. And then once we get into those like one, two, three punch of Lady Helen, the title track of Kai and coming into Quiet Riot. Ugh, my favorite track outside of Deep Peace is the title track from Kai. The building of the second half of this track where it's got this arpeggio scale that's just repeated over and over again and things are built more and more and more until we get to this massive wall of sound and then Devin starts to sing over top of it and oh Devin's vocals on this album are his best he is in a massive vibrato high end scale and it's really as though he's channeling the divine when we get into the big soundscapes of that. This is a fantastic album, but I do understand how disjointed it can feel with the couple of tracks like Coast, Disruptor, Gatto, and Terminal, and how kind of like a 180 degree switch of Heaven Send, Ain't Never Gonna Win, and Winter Are. I mean, even still, I love Train Fire. <laughs> I love how fun that track is. I can understand how this might be a little bit of an ask for those who haven't really heard or understand some of the mythos for Devin's work. So let's talk about Casualties of Cool. This is kind of a side project without the Devin Townsend banner on it. This is kind of like a little bit of a side project between him and I think it's Che? Yeah, Che Ami Derval. Uh, she tours quite often with him and he, she was on the most recent tour back in 2020, if you can believe that. Her vocals with Devin's guitar, bass, keyboards, a little bit of vocal works, uh, and Morgan Argan on uh, percussion and drums, very, very minimal. This is what would happen if you had Ghost, but you didn't have quite the big sounds of Ghost. It's very stripped down. It's very much an acoustic album in that sense. Uh, and for those who want that heavy aspect on it, you're not going to find it on Casualties of Cool at all. I still love this album though. I love the harmonies that she is bringing into this album. Her voice is angelic. It is so dripping in beauty in that. And I appreciate just where all this music goes. There's a lot of music at almost like well over 70 minutes worth of music. Uh, and it just takes you on a massive journey. I still think that the two beginning tracks of Daddy and Mountaintop are the two best tracks off of this. Just with the harmonizations and the, the blendings of the music and the vocals, I think are just absolutely stunning. The rest of the music is still really, really good. I wouldn't necessarily say this is your first stop when it comes to Devin's music though, as it is very different than most of the music that came around. But if you're looking for a much more atmospheric, much more acoustic, very like Sunday afternoon kind of an album or an album to listen to as you're falling asleep, this is a perfect album for you. Absolutely perfect. Let's talk about the last one on the uh, best bets, which is Empath. Uh, Empath is a very, very interesting album. It is kind of the poster child for an album that is just so all over the place. It is just, 
trying all these different styles all at once that um, at sometimes it kind of makes it out as though it's soup <laughs> than anything else, but I still really, really enjoy it. Um, I don't come back to this as much as I thought I was going to when it first came out, uh, just because of how strange and all over the place it is. I mean, you get a very good idea of what this is going to sound with Coast and Genesis because of how strange Genesis just is. It is all over the place. It's so weird and strange. It feels as though he has taken what he has learned with the three albums from the Epic Cloud soundscapes and really like tried specific aspects of that. And it also ends with a 20 minute epic that I still friggin' love. Um, so yeah, uh, Empath is a very interesting kind of hidden gem because the tracks on here are brilliant and beautiful. They're just so all over the place that it's really hard to kind of sit down to and listen as a cohesive whole. All right, so now that we've kind of got into those, uh, let's go into Now That You're Initiated. These are albums that are definitely different. <laughs> these, are, these albums are far from perfect, but they all have moments on it of greatness. And the first one that I want to talk about is the one-two punch of Z2. Z2 is technically two albums. Sky Blue, or I think it's Blue Sky. Um, I can never remember which one it is. Uh, and Zeltoid 2. Um, Dark Matter, I believe it is. Um, so these two albums of Z2 hold some of his interesting work. Um, I think of the two, I feel like uh, Ziltoid 2 is a little bit better. It feels like a musical representation of a comic book. Um, it is very musical theater in that sense. I love some of the more raw aspects, but it does feel as though, and I mentioned this back way, way back in my initial review for this, it feels as though they took Ziltoid the album and rolled it right through the Epic Cloud soundscapes. So instead of having that raw, guttural, energetic side of metal, it's this big, very crescendo-y, very larger than life, very large scale music in that sense. I still love it, and I think it has some of Devin's best works on there. There's a lot of really good little bits and pieces on there. Unfortunately, the other album of Sky Blue is kind of Epic Cloud 2.0. You know, there's not a whole lot of new styles or flavors on it. I feel like this is one of the least returned to albums in his discography for me. Discography for me. Well, that was a fun one. Because I feel like he doesn't really take too much chances on here. There's not a whole lot of innovation on it. It just kind of is. But still, as a one-two punch, it's a great package overall. And you just kind of have to know what you're going into. Another one that I'm going to be talking about is Dev Lab. This is one of his um, more guitar-centered just experiments. The one thing that I really particularly like about DevLab is that it does feel as though it's a cohesive whole. Like it's just DevLab from like part one all the way to part 15 and each moment kind of just comes and goes. It's a almost like a continuous thought. Uh, it's very train of thought in that sense and I just love how almost like atmospheric it all is. It's very similar to Casualties of Cool and Ghost in being that kind of thing, but it, it's definitely a lot less structured. It really is just him kind of noodling away on the guitar, and I really, really appreciate that. I don't feel as though there's a lot of like tangibility to it, so if you're into that kind of ethereal, up in the clouds aspects, I do feel as though this is his best addition of that kind of a flavor and that kind of an aspect as we will see kind of moving on. So this would be a good place to kind of just dip your toe into and see if it's interested or not. And now we're coming into two albums that I feel a lot of people have been waiting for me to talk about. The first one being Infinity and the other one being Accelerated Evolution. These are some of his early albums and I'm going to talk about them individually. So first off, let's talk about Infinity. There's a lot to love off of Infinity. Uh, again, it's very early in his career. It's his second full-length album that he put out under the Devin Townsend Nomaker. And there's moments off of Infinity that I still love and he plays quite regularly live it is kind of like far and away from his best but you've got the big tracks like truth uh war uh as well as the i love colonial boy 
Uh, love that track, by the way. But even still, there's a lot of like really strange tracks in a good way, such as Ants uh, and Unity. Um, maybe even Noisy Pink Bubbles is a very interesting track as well, if I'm being honest. Um, but I don't feel as though like this album has any like one particular like big track. This is him being a little bit more on the accessible side of things, a little bit more on the like radio friendly aspect of it. And for the most part, it works very, very well for what it is. And that is one thing that I do really, really appreciate for Infinity is that it never tries to be anything that it's not. Uh, and I do like that he has taken a number of tracks off this album and recontextualized it later on. And finally, let's talk about Accelerated Evolution, the Devin Townsend Band. This is his first album in the Devin Townsend Band moniker. Uh, and there's some really interesting uh, tracks off of this. My favorite one being Deadhead. I think a lot of people can agree that Deadhead is kind of the best track off of this one. Um, and it does hold some of the really good, like, meaty tracks off of Devin Townsend's uh, whole discography. I still think that it's kind of far and away from his best work, but you honestly still can't go wrong. And much like um, Infinity, it, it has a solid start to finish runtime. Like, there's no real duds off of this. It's just the, the overall music doesn't hit quite as hard as some of his later and previous works in that sense. Uh, but, I mean, if you start with the Accelerated Evolution, you're not going to be disappointed at all. Um, and it really kind of goes to show what Devin is really starting to play with at this point in his career. Okay, now we're coming into the final stretch. These are the Proceed With Caution. These are kind of like the big uh, red lights being like, eh, maybe you want to just, maybe not. <laughs> uh, these are only for those who have so far loved everything that has come before and really want to di deep dive into this. Even the diehard Devin Townsend fans can say these albums can be taken or left. Um, they are very far from perfect in that sense. We're talking about Physicist, we're talking about The Hummer, we're talking about his last two albums of Puzzle, The Puzzle and Snuggles. So let's talk about Physicist for a second. Let's talk about Physicist. This one is a very, very interesting album. And I think the biggest issue with this album is the rushed, aspect of this. It does feel very incomplete. And a lot of that just had to do with a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Devin was not in a very good place when he was putting out this album. It almost became a strapping young lad album. And it just feels very disjointed. And it doesn't quite know what it wants to be. Now this still holds a lot of the seeds of album or tracks to come later, such as Kingdom, such as Death, even a little bit of Jupiter, um, and Namaste as well. I still feel as though this was the album that he was trying to blend a little bit more of his spirituality with just so much of that creative drive and needing to get everything done all at once. Like this was supposed to be a really grand big statement that ended up falling flat. And I think a lot of people will agree that it's good, but it's definitely far from his best work. Um, and it, it does have like that very raw feeling and that raw atmosphere to it. But I still feel like he has taken what he has learned from Physicist and applied it beautifully to albums much later on in his discography. And for that, I think that this album was a real solid winner because of how much Devin has learned from it. The same can kind of be said a little bit about The Hummer. Uh, the Hummer, very much like DevLab, was one that was kind of just an atmospheric, very like avant-garde um, experiment in that sense. The thing that I do love about this is the longer stretches of music. Uh, we've got, you know, Ark, which is 23 minutes, The Hummer being 15 minutes, uh, Cosmic Surf being 16 minutes. Man, this is an investment. This is a big investment with not a whole lot of dividends to be played out of. It's just kind of atmospheric, experimental, very abstract, very impressionistic music. This is kind of what you would get if you had Ghost or DevLab but there was no real structure. It was just music. And for that, I can kind of take or leave this album. I think this album would have really served very well if they had some kind of unifying 
sound, you know, if it all built towards something rather than just being very impressionistic type of music. I mean, if you're into that kind of stuff, you'll probably love it. If not, and finally, I want to talk about The Puzzle and Snuggles, Beautiful Dream. Uh, these were the two albums that came out of the 2020 lockdown, and it is very much a, a art piece rather than a musical expression. And the entire marketing campaign that Devin did with this was him going the entire time, these are not music albums. These are art installation pieces. These aren't my typical, usual music stuff. It's barely music. It is just art. It is something that I needed to get out so that I could continue on and just continue to create. And because of that, they're kind of all over the place. Like, I will admit, Snuggles, at least, is a very unifying piece of music. It's very ethereal. Like, this is the most ethereal he's ever been. It's Ghost if it had absolutely no structure. It was just whiffs and sounds and clouds in the sky that never really took on any kind of shape or form. The puzzle is just straight up insane. Um, and if you want something that is just straight up, very abstract, very avant-garde, very art, then Puzzle is great. And one of the things I do love about Puzzle is the collaboration that came within it. I mean, that is the one thing that I can at least say as a positive of 2020's lockdown and the whole pandemic is that it did force so many people to band together in their own isolation, <laughs> as funny as that is. Um, but it is a collaboration of efforts in that sense. And it does hold some true artistic beauty towards it, but man, you gotta wade through a lot of what the fucks. <laughs> and so that's pretty much it. That is all, if you can believe it. All of the albums that Devin has done as a Devin Townsend moniker. Uh, for some extra credit, if you ever wanted to, you should check out his first um, group of Strapping Young Lad. Strapping Young Lad is just balls to the wall, speed, thrash metal, it's not my jam. It's not my taste. I much prefer like uh, more symphonic sounds of my metal. But if you're into that like very raw, very heavy, very raw kind of metal, then check out Star Up the Young Lad. Again, it's not my taste, but it might be yours. The other one that he did just for a laugh was Punky Brewster, where it was supposed to be this like death metal group that essentially went punk and it's a punk album and it's fun. You know, it's a fun little gag album, but it's not one that I uh, return to all that often. And finally, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this um, whole video, uh, Steve Vai's album, Sex and Religion, you really should at least check it out. You know, it does show the genesis of Devin in terms of his singing styles, because he's the vocalist off that one, as well as some of his like actual uh, musicianship, because he does lend a hand every once in a while with the guitar works on that. That's like some extra credit, you know? Like that's not necessarily something that you need to listen to. Um, it's less than, you know, the overall discography, but it's definitely more than some of the albums that I said with the Proceed With Caution. So, there you have it. There's my whole kit and caboodle for Devin Townsend. What did you guys think about this list? What would you put in terms of like best place to start, best bets, now that you're initiated, and finally the proceed with caution? Let me know all about that as well as how my list stacked up to yours by commenting down below. What's your favorite Devin Townsend record? What's your least favorite? Again, just let me know. I, I love talking about Devin Townsend in that sense. I think that's about it. I think I'm going to wrap it up there. So, thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.